Hello, welcome to South County Spotlight on Frontier Community Access Television. I'm Chris Collins, back in studio solo today, as we have a number of things to catch up on. You know, it's been a bit of a quiet summer. Not a lot's been going on, but there have been a few things that have happened in recent meetings that I think are worth noting. So let's get right to it. Obviously, SCEMS is still very much an issue. Uh, still discussing where SCEMS is going to land. Will it be in Waitley? Will it be in Deerfield? Selectmen in Deerfield have rejected the recent RFP. There were only a couple of proposals that were brought forward. One was for the Waitley facility over at the Waitley Town offices. The other one was for what is now the Deerfield Arts Bank building right here on Sugarloaf Street. Uh, the SCEMS Board of Oversight chose to go with the Waitley facility, which isn't a big surprise. That's sort of the one that they've been looking at. Deerfield, however, feels differently as they have, and now are, the town is examining the possibility of building its own facility to house SCEMS. Now, I'm not sure how that's going to work in the grand scheme of things. Certainly, the longer this organization is without a single home base of operations, the more difficult it is to run. Right now, SCEMS is spread out over multiple locations with multiple you know, pieces of equipment in different areas. They need to be in one spot, but there's continually this sort of rub as to where this facility is going to be. And Deerfield seems to very much still be strongly in favor of having it in town. Now, the select board, uh, like I said, is looking at options for building its own facility. But it, it seems to be very clear that this board of selectmen also wants to maintain very much a hands-on approach to how SCEMS is run, at least from the Deerfield side. And one of the casualties of that is Matt Russo. It's been a long time EMS figure here in South County, and he was on the SCEMS board, and recently the Board of Selectmen chose to pull him off of that board and replace him with new selectman Trevor McDaniel. It wasn't obviously taken very well. Matt Russo came to a recent select board meeting and expressed his dismay at that decision. I can only ask that as a representative for the town, You've got the passion around this. I know you've got you've got quite a bit on your plate already, and I can see the passion you've got for the the things that you're involved in. Um, it's a service that has done well. It's a service that needs. It runs well. The folks who are doing the job day to day do a phenomenal job. The biggest challenge we've had is fighting the mistruths and the rumors and and the stories that get generated out of this town. We go to the meetings, they sit down like, what are people thinking? And you try to take the time to explain what's going on and get to the bottom of it. I would only hope that in the future, and I know we've got new members of the Finance Committee coming, before we blow things up into big monumental issues, could we take the time and stop for a minute and go ask the people who have got the answers to weigh in? Matt, I, 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 I just want you to know that um I very much appreciate everything you have done mm -hmm. because I've worked alongside you for many years um, and you, how committed you are. And um, what we did was appoint ourselves, which sounds terrible, um, versus appointing you who are so totally committed and informed. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I, it, I, I, I will own up to being my idea. Um, I couldn't think of anything else that would solve the problem. And we talked about it for weeks as, okay, I'm throwing this out. I'm open to anything. What do you guys have? And ultimately, we couldn't think of anything else that would work. We anticipate us being um, appointees to South County for a relatively short time. I mean, I, I, I'm going to leave it open-ended. I'm not going to commit to any length. But um, what we're going to do is... Um, uh, appoint alternates for our positions. We're going down to South County as a commitment to the, to the service. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason why I felt that the only way that we're gonna solve some of the issues is not a he said, she said, we're out of the loop because you know we're in this meeting mm -hmm. and then you know nothing's on our agenda we're, we're going to start our business, and we have public comment. And so I, I arbitrarily moved public comment to, to the end today because we really have to do our business. But we're not prepared. 
public comment is 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 incredibly important. Where it's is we need to listen, we need to clarify, we need to um, address, direct people to where they're supposed to go, whatever. But we can't have lengthy conversations because we need to do our business. Sure. So the whole point of um, appointing ourselves was so that we could go down and show commitment to South County and show how much we appreciate the service because it is a life, I mean, it, it could be a, a potential life um, difference between life and death and, and the quality of life if, if you're rehabbing someone, mm. obviously. So um, it's, it's a critical, to, I mean, it's the bottom line, the safety issue. And to me, if it's a safety issue, it's not negotiable. It's, we are committed 100%. Sure. So we're going down, and we are committing and being informed, making decisions. But I am hopeful that you will participate in the meetings because at some point the idea is that we would flip and become alternates. So there is always, at every single meeting, there will be three Deerfield representatives. If any one of us can't come, our alternates come. And when our alternates become the, the, the person, then the, uh, we would step up and go to that meeting. But the whole t point is for us to be informed so that misinformation could end and that, that we move forward. I don't know if the board's going to change their mind and put Matt Russo back on the SCAMS Board of Oversight. It's unfortunate, though, a guy like that who has been so dedicated to the cause is now on the outside looking in. But I kind of understand a little bit as to why the board is doing this. If you recall, the way SCAMS was set up, the boards of selectmen in the three affected towns are the ones that have to be the final arbiters of what happens with those operations. And it would make sense that selectmen in each of those towns would want to have a couple of members or all of them on there, if possible, to sort of guide how the organization is run. I know that there are people in Deerfield, and there are some that feel very, very strongly that maybe SCEMS is not managing the money very well. And, and I don't know if there's any evidence to support that argument. But this is an ongoing discussion. And Deerfield feels very, very strongly, at least some members of the Deerfield community feel very strongly that this ambulance service is their ambulance service. It has been for 48 years. So it should be staying in Deerfield. At the very least, Deerfield should have more control over what happens with that organization because Deerfield pays the lion's share of the SCAMS budget. Then there's also the question of whether or not the town's getting what they perceive to be the best bang for the buck. We have done some reporting on SCAMS. We've looked at it from all angles. We've talked to the people there. And nobody is quarreling with the level of service coming from the organization. It continues to be a discussion about oversight, infrastructure, and how the business end will operate moving forward. Those are issues that have to be worked out for sure. But the South County, these three towns are lucky to have this service. And I think nobody is disagreeing on that point. The disagreement comes on who handles and who decides the policy decisions and the policy angles. And that's something that is not going to go away easily. We'll see where it goes and we'll follow it on future editions of South County Spotlight. Let's move to another issue that came up recently on the Deerfield Select Board floor. There was a public hearing regarding a home business permit for Matt Gilmore, who has a, a what looks like a home business and has been in, in place for a long time out near the Mill Village condominiums. And uh, it, we have some video actually uh, that was taken by Matt Carlson, if you want to roll that. And you can see the condition of that property. The, some of the neighbors there are not happy with the way the property looks. They're not happy with what's going on there. And a few of them came out to speak to the Board of Selectmen and give their thoughts as to why this home business permit should not be granted. I'm Cheryl Daggett, and I am a member of the Board of Trustees of the Mountain View Condominium Association. Our association consists of eight buildings and 15 families and we are both immediate and secondary abutters to Mr. Gilmore's property. Many of our unit owners are in attendance this evening. It is the consensus of our unit owners that we as an association oppose Mr. Gilmore's application for a home business permit. The nature of his business, in our estimation, definitely is not compatible with the look and feel of a residential neighborhood. 
to our association, and especially to the unit owners living directly across the street from Mr. Gilmore's property, it is evident that some sort of business has been conducted on the 72 Mill Village Road property for more than two years. Over this time, it has been the noise, the fumes, and the destruction of the landscape that has upset us the most. The noises emanating from this property are heard during the work week and also on weekends. It consists of beeping of trucks and construction vehicles as they back up, the whine of vehicles idling for long periods of time, the loud clanking sound of trucks dumping loads of asphalt, concrete, dirt, stumps, and the like onto the property. The annoying noise of construction equipment moving this material across the site and the whir of metal working machinery used to grind, cut, and polish metal components. The noise begins as early as 5.30 a.m. It continues on and off throughout the day and may not end until well into the evening, 11, 12 o'clock at night. I just want to say I'm Joanne Gochinski, uh, 74 Mill Village, and one thing that I can't get out of my head was two years ago we set up an Easter egg hunt for my three granddaughters on the, the side of the house and everything else. And he had his diesel truck backed up towards our yard. And we had to move, the kids are out there coughing and saying how much it stinks and everything else. We had to move our Easter egg hunt. A fa you know, it was a family thing in their little mm. dresses just because of the fumes. And it just, it, it just makes me angry. And I don't want that to happen again. Right. They shouldn't have to breathe. I agree. That air, they right. don't. They shouldn't have to listen to that noise. I watch them. They come over the house weekly, two, three days a week, mm -hmm. and they got to listen to clanging and banging. They don't even enjoy being outside a lot, and I'm tired of it. You know, my I, my home should be safe for them to breathe the air and have fun and play outside without having to worry about any of that. I just had to get that off my chest. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. I guess there is some progress being made, even though Gilmore did not show up for the public hearing to answer any questions, but at least by applying for a home business, there's a tacit admission there that there actually has been a business operating at that facility. For a long time, that was not something anybody wanted to admit. It was just a guy who had a bunch of equipment in his yard, and it wasn't like he was operating an actual business. Well. Now the town officials have seen enough, they've had enough, and uh, clearly they want uh, to make sure that whatever is happening there is legally sanctioned. So far it is not. What I was waiting for at that meeting was to see if anybody was going to go there when it comes to the pedigree of this particular applicant. Matt Gilmore, of course, is the son of former selectman Mark Gilmore, and of course Gilmore's replacement on the board, the guy who beat him for re-election, Kippy Camosa, actually did decide to go there, and it was pretty interesting. You folks don't know me, I'm kind of brutally honest, but uh, I, I would suspect that the reason that this has been going on for so long is because the person who applied for it, his father actually owns the property, and his father has been a former selectman in the town for several years. And I think the, the board or everybody involved kept getting, you know, pushed aside or excused or whatever and it, it, it's intolerable it sh never should have gone on that long but it did and and for whatever point i have I, i'm sorry for that but we're going to or at least i'm going to do my best to to bring it to an end now obviously that was an uncomfortable moment uh, carolyn ness did her best as carolyn ness is wont to do to try and sort of calm things down politically while making it very clear that the board is no longer going to tolerate what's been happening there. Most of our enforcement is um, to try to get compliance and um, make things safe. Certainly having the diesel um, trucks idle is, is a public health issue and is not safe. I, I mean, Dick is here. Um, he will attest to the fact that he has um, been diligent um, trying to get compliance and trying to get resolution. And um, I think we are all at the end of our rope here. 
Now, this is not the first time, by the way, the town of Deerfield has dealt with a scoff law. Of course, the Romanowski pig farm has been something that has been an ongoing issue that the town has been forced to deal with over the years. And it took the better part of, I think, close to 20 years to be able to get some sort of resolution on that. Dick Kalashevsky, the building agent, is very, very hot to trot over this issue. He wants there to be some enforcement. He spoke very, very strongly, as you saw at that meeting, if you watched it, um, in favor of the town putting some muscle behind their regulations. So at this point, Gilmore's license application has been denied, and the town is looking at instituting some fines for each day he is in noncompliance. And that could very, very quickly add up into the hundreds, even the thousands of dollars. The question becomes, what happens if the town is able to get enough judgments that they can take him to court? And this is one area where towns get very frustrated. And, and I've seen this in numerous communities around Franklin County in my time as a reporter. The laws regarding land ownership and home ownership very much are skewed in the favor of the homeowner. A guy could not pay his property taxes for two to three years. The town could take him to tax title, take him to court, come in on the day of the judgment, giving the town the ownership rights of that property. The guy could come in and pay his taxes and his back arrears, and the whole thing starts all over again. It's incredibly frustrating if you're a town official, especially someone like Dick Kalashewski, who tries to follow the letter of the law and really works to enforce the bylaws and the regulations to have something like this happen. But give credit where it's due. At least they're trying to figure out a way to get this guy back into compliance and rejecting that application is a step in the right direction. Whether or not the town will ever get a chance to hear from this guy as to what he's actually doing over there, that remains to be seen. But it's certainly worth following and we will on future editions of this show. Ann Sunderland continues to search for a police chief. Thomas Harding, who was the first choice of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen, bowed out of recent negotiations and as Scott Bergeron points out, this was simply a negotiation that failed to, I guess, catch fire. The uh, negotiations broke down uh, when we came to a discussion around um, total compensation package. Anybody who's negotiated a con contract understands, and I'll, I'll, I'll throw my left hand toward Sherry <coughs> right now, we, we, we negotiate total compensation packages. There's the W-2 package, there's the vacations, there's the all of that. They're associated with the total compensation. And we simply couldn't come to an agreement. As you know, the, the town appropriated a uh, salary of $72,000, and we have some latitude inside of contract negotiations to work on uh, some of the holiday schedule and intangibles around education and education incentive. And we frankly weren't, we weren't that far apart, but we were far enough apart that there was no way I could come back with a straight face to the board and recommend uh, extending the negotiations any farther. And Tom, to his credit, ever a gentleman, understood as well that this is just business. It's quite all right. It's, it's just the way it is. Now the board has decided to make an offer to Eric Dimitropoulos, who was the second choice. Ironically enough, Dimitropoulos was not reappointed to his position as Barry police chief. And uh, that town in and of itself has got its own litany of political problems. And I think Dimitropoulos is better off getting out of there, quite frankly, the way things have been going. Um, one of the things that was a concern, I think, of the board of Selectman and Sunderland was the perception that maybe they lost their first choice and that anybody else would sort of be a step down. And Tom Fyden Kevis did his best to tamp that idea down. I know over at the South County Senior Center, someone um, one time went to a director and says, you weren't their first choice. And, 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 and she says, well, I wasn't your first choice. I says, well, I wasn't, my, I wasn't the first choice of the job I hold right now either. So it, it's not an unusual thing. And, and sometimes I think, um, as, as she has proven, and, right now, sometimes not being the first choice is not necessarily, because then that would kind of indicate that we never are always right, and heaven forbid, I'm told all the time that we're not right, so. No, uh, we, have a pretty good <laughs> we have a pretty good track record of. Being wrong? Doing extra work, let's just. Doing extra that. work, yeah. very good point, Scott, very good. So I, I, don't, look at, I don't look at it as um, we lost our first choice, we lost a choice, um, I, can, I can comment that both I will comment that both um, both remaining 
that were presented to us become highly recommended. Now, it's important to point out that the board has only voted to enter into negotiations with the Metropolis. There has not been a contract agreed upon, at least at the time I'm taping this show. By the time you're watching it, they may already have an appointment made. But it's good to see the board is taking this seriously. This, this board um, and every board that has to make an appointment like this, they've really got to go through it by the numbers. There was a selection committee that was put together. There were interviews. We covered them all here publicly with the board on FCAT. And so you got to see and you can go to YouTube and watch those interviews again. The board was very thorough in their vetting. And the good news for, for Sunderland is that they had three really good candidates. I think one of the unanswered questions uh, is why Brendan Lyons, who's the current officer in charge at Sunderland, was not considered as a potential finalist for this job. And I think if, based on what I've watched and read and seen, I think that the select board is trying to find new leadership from outside the current department. I don't believe anybody thinks there's a problem inside the Sunderland Police Department, but sometimes I think a fresh set of eyes, a fresh perspective can be a good thing. It's certainly worth considering uh, seeing what's out there. And Harding, I think, maybe had a little more of experience, a little bit more, I think, gravitas in the way he would approach budget, a little more time on the job. Dean Metropolis could be a very, very good candidate. He's a guy who in his interview made it clear he's all about community, he wants to get the schools involved, uh, he's a young guy, and I, I think he's somebody who could be a good leader for that department. But this board is not taking this lightly, they're taking it very, very seriously. It's possible they may have to go all the way back to the drawing board and start a new search, we don't know. But at this point, negotiations ongoing, by the time you're watching this it may have already been figured out. But whatever happens, we will continue to keep an eye on it and follow it on future editions here of South County Spotlight. And the town of Waitley, of course, is considering, once again, opportunities for space in the town offices. I mentioned the scam situation earlier. The frontier negotiation is still very much on the burner. Um, of course, as you know, the frontier superintendent's office, there were some questionable air quality readings, findings in that building, and they have to get out of there. And one of the places they're looking at is the possibility of the Waitley town offices. The question is, could scams and the superintendent both go into that facility or are they going to compete for the same space? I think uh, certainly Waitley, one of the selling points of going to the Western Mass Library Systems Building was that there will be access capacity to bring in organizations, nonprofits, groups. I mean, under the terms of the loan they have to finance that project, it's got to be a nonprofit. It can't be a business for profit venture that can go into that space. But Frontier and SCEMS would fit very well within the framework of that financing operation. The, Sund or the Waitley Board of Selectmen has talked about the possibility of finding a way to finance that note, paying it off outright so they'd be out from under any kind of a regulation that forces them to have a certain type of tenant over another. See where it goes. I mean, certainly there's some time left. Frontier wants to get in there. They want to get a resolution to this before school starts. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen. There is a meeting coming up in early August to discuss this. We'll, we'll certainly be at that meeting and we'll let you know on future editions of South County Spotlight. That'll do it for this week's Week in Review. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Collins. You've been watching South County Spotlight. For all of us here at FCAT, have a good day.